In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Those words are by Leonard Cohen in his hymn song, Hallelujah. Most of us know that. Six years ago today on this Sunday, I stood here and repeated those lines. And then I said, what a week, huh? 2016. 16. Many were grateful, relieved, even hopeful. Many were stunned, grief stricken even despairing. Six years later, and a whole lot of water under the bridge, a whole lot of water, kind of like the falls, 365 for six years. I stand here again and I say, what are we? The grateful then are stunned today. The grief stricken then are much relieved. We are a nation still very much divided amongst one another, but we are not just a broken nation, but also a broken community, a broken people. We have broken systems and broken dreams, and there seems to be a crack in everything. On top of all that reality, this morning we get to hear this gospel about the end of things. Wars, insurrections, plagues, earthquakes, all those fun things. <laughs> we are no different than the people in Jesus' day who badly needed a savior. They were looking for one, and so are we. We are almost always, though, looking for the wrong things and at the wrong people. These are the false prophets and the false signs that Jesus warns us not to follow. To be blunt, the movement toward Christian nationalism is heretical, and Jesus would be rolling over in his grave if he were still in one. <laughs> get it? Get it? Get it? <laughs> My faith tells me, though, that in our crackedness, in our brokenness, the light can indeed cut in. That light is Jesus. There's a song about that, too. Instead of a psalm this morning, the alternative for that moment in between our two readings, usually, this week is a canticle. It is the song that I have been singing all week. I love the version that we sing, and clearly we need to sing it more often because we need to learn the verses. <laughs> because they kind of go along at pretty breakneck speed. We'll practice those. Canticles are songs or hymns that come out of scripture, not in the book of Psalms, okay? And as you'll read in your, in your bulletin this morning, the Psalms is the hymn book that Jesus had. So this morning's canical comes from the 12th chapter of Isaiah. It is a good antidote for Luke's doomsday words. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Jesus does not call us to be leaders, but followers of him. To turn away from false prophets and keep looking to him for the next step on the journey of reconciliation and eternal life. Because only God knows what is to come. We don't even need to try. We are just supposed to listen to where he tells us to go and what he tells us to say and do. We have far more important things to do than to fret about what is to come, or worse, to tell others what is to come. Trust in me, Jesus says. Don't be afraid. Actually, he says, don't be terrified. There will always be people who look at these verses of scripture and say, the end is near. Repent. I wonder if somebody was outside Munich Stadium this morning with the same sign. The end is near, they say. Repent. 
They use their power to call upon people to follow them out of fear. And their own turning away from the voice of God has put them on that path. I found the graphic on your bulletin this week, and I love it. The beginning is near. The beginning is near. Jesus calls us to listen to the suffering and the oppressed. They speak truth because they know things in ways that the rest of us don't, because they have little or no power. Some of them are the disenfranchised who voted last week. They are the ones who have been cracked open by poverty or discrimination. They are the younger voters who have grown up in a world where gun violence has killed their friends and they spent countless hours in school as little children learning how to hide from an active shooter. They are showing us that in their brokenness, the light has gotten in. We are called to be courageous and devote ourselves to Jesus' call to create community oppose injustice, work for peace, and make a place for the outcast and the lonely. That's where we begin. That's the beginning we're shooting for. That is why we gather around a table every week. It's not that little bit of bread and a swallow of wine that will keep us alive. It won't, or will it? If we don't come each week with open hands and yearning hearts, we will never taste healing or pardon or grace, nor will we ever have the courage sometimes to even get out of bed. We need this food for sustenance, for courage, to combat hatred and violence in any form. Those who have the means to relieve suffering and opposition and oppression, that's our call, that's our beginning. That's something we are called to do. Today is the day of kindness. Anybody heard of that yet? Apparently it started in Europe, I believe is what I read yesterday. And it's kind of, kind of starting a little bit of a snowball to become a, a day kind of like the United Nations Days of Peace, or Day of Peace or something like that. It's a work in progress, but anyway. It's coming. It's coming. It's being recognized more and more places on November 13th, the Day of Kindness. Kind of a cool idea, I think. <laughs> Bishop Curry had a, had a little video yesterday about it, a little early in the week. I didn't see it till yesterday. And he suggests that we pick it up for ourselves, a Day of Kindness on this day, and do three things. Check in. Check in with somebody you haven't seen recently. And he laughingly says, if you're high tech, Zoom them, <laughs> FaceTime them. If you're low tech, text them. If you're no tech, call them on the phone. <laughs> that's, that's Bishop Curry for you. But find somebody, think of somebody this morning that you haven't seen for a while, you haven't talked to for a while. Sometime this week, reach out, just say hi been a while. It's good to see you. It's good to hear from you. Two, thank somebody special in your life. Who is that person? Who is that person that needs to be thanked? Genuinely, from your heart, not just thanks, but thank you. It means a lot, what you did, who you are. It's made a difference in my life. Thank you. Three, do something for children. Kind of an odd little bit. But children so often get displaced, told to be quiet, put out of the way. It's a joy that they're here. I love it to hear their little voices. They make a difference in our lives and they bring us life. Do something for a kid. I don't know what. But do something for a kid. Write a note to your grandkids or your godchildren. Or see a kid on the street after school and just say hi. That'll scare the wits out of them. <laughs> but it might, 
it might let a little light in. Any one of those three things would let a little light in for kindness day. I don't believe the end is near, or at least any nearer than it was a month ago or six years ago. It's not something I really think about or worry about. But I do like that the beginning is near. Every day, we are getting a little bit closer to the beginning, the new beginning, the new Jerusalem the new hope, the new promise, the promise of everlasting life, the new hope in seeing Jesus face to face. All those things, every day, they're getting nearer and nearer and nearer. And I don't know when, and I really don't care when, but we are on this journey to get closer, to find each other, to see the light in each other so that we don't get discouraged. What we must do is be like Jesus in our actions. We must pray. We must gather to support each other. We must challenge those places where others are broken and beaten down. And we must listen and look for the light that is within them. Because even if it is just a flicker, as long as there is breath in us, there is life in us, and there is light in us. It's in there in all of us. The first step might be to realize how cracked and broken we all really are. And then let the light shine through us so that it offers hope to somebody in a new way on a new day. It's a big task, enormous odds, but Jesus offers words of hope. In him, there will be words and wisdom. Let him be your savior. Diana Butler Bass says, what Jesus preached in the midst of endings was that endings always point to new beginnings. His followers will make a new community, one that embodies peace, justice, and righteousness, that gives itself to hope and faith and love. It is a people gathered in sharing and Sabbath and generosity and gratitude. That community will insist that new life comes out of every death. Every ending heralds a new beginning. And resurrection is a practice, not a miracle. Every resurrection is a practice, not a miracle. I leave you with that this week because I think that that practice, that discipline, it held Jesus. It can certainly hold us. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.